good to see everybody out the Lord's house this morning. How many glad you saved? Amen. 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 Okay, well, you get to thinking about everything that's going on in the world, you know, it'll depress you real quick if you ain't careful. And you know, the answer is what that song was saying there, tell it to the Lord, tell it to Jesus. I appreciate the Lord being good to us, health and strength to be here this morning. You know, I believe we're living probably, as a Christian, we're probably living in the best times it's ever been. We're seeing a lot of this Bible fulfilled right now. Mm. A lot of things these prophets talked about in the Old Testament, they never saw a lot of it's coming to life right before our eyes right now. And the best thing about it is the Lord's getting ready to come back. He's coming. Yeah, I was thinking last night, what, what worries me more than anything if the Lord don't come got two youngins sitting back there. What are they going to see in the next 20 years? And then we've seen stuff the last 15 or 20 years that is blowing our minds right now. What are they going to see? What's your grandkids going to see 15, 20 years down the road from now if the Lord don't come back? Hey, we got a mess. The Bible tells us it's going to wax colder and it's going to get worse before it comes and equity is going to abound. So it, it should shock us. We ought, to be, uh, we ought to be rejoicing because we know it can't be long. He's coming. Right. Everything, everything's lining up. It said it'd be in the days that it was as Noah. They look around, it's a wicked place. And you know, I was thinking there last night as I studied a little bit, you know, hey, there ain't no better place to live in the United States of America. But we're just about to become a life and stock around for These other countries are life at us and stuff our government's doing. You know, it's our government's a joke, right? Best thing that ever happened, Congress sent everything down through where every one of them be voted out, start all over again. And I tell you, man, we got a crazy bunch right now. Like a bunch of young that's back and forth all the time, just arguing and can't get nothing done. But you know, ladies one in heaven, they ain't none of this has caught him off guard. He knows what's going to happen. The Lord be a praying for him to come. I appreciate the Lord being good to us this morning. Got your Bible. We're going to be looking in. <clears throat> two different places this morning. I'm going to read one verse to begin with over in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Then we're going to read in Isaiah chapter number 43. So we'll try to find both those places there. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and Isaiah chapter 43. There's going to be a little verse that we're going to mention in each. Here we're going to read that in just a minute. This this little phrase that we're going to mention is found about three times in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13. The Bible says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now I want you to notice down close to the last part of that verse. It says, make a way to escape. I want you to keep that in mind where it's talking about making a way right there. And look over in, in Isaiah chapter number 43. We're going to begin reading in verse number 10. And this is talking about the nation of Israel here in, in Isaiah chapter number 43. The Bible, in verse number 10, the Bible said, You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I am chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall they be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no, no Savior. I have declared and have saved and have shown, and when there was no strength, strange God among you. Therefore are, are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Ye before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, your Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters. 
which bringeth forth the chariot and horse and the army and the power. They shall lay down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as toad. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? Shall, shall you know, know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want you to notice back up in verse 16. The Bible said, And such saith so the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea. Now there's that little phrase again, maketh a way. And down in verse number 19, the Bible said, Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? And I'll even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers and the desert. Now you notice there in verse 16 it's talking about how the Lord made a way at the sea. Then it's talking about in verse number 19 how the Lord make a way in the wilderness and the rivers of the desert. Now he done all that for the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. Hey, God made a way for them when they looked like there was no way possible for anything to be done for the children of Israel. I want to talk to you a little while this morning on the subject, God will make a way. You know, when we study the, the history of Israel, you know, God always made a way for His people. He always has. He's always took care of them. I mean, even when they thought they were going to kill them out, even when they thought that some of these uh, countries around the world thought they were going to do away with them, hey, God still made a way for them. He's always made a way for the children of Israel. And you know when you study the Bible, you know you find the Gentile nations, as you and me this morning, has been grafted into something special. Hey, we've been grafted into something through God's mercy and grace. And you know when you become born again, you're part of the family of God. So look at it like this. So just as He made a way for Israel... He can and will make a way for me and you this morning. Hey, when things look tough, when things look dark, we need to look up and be glad we've got a God that's all powerful this morning. Yeah. Hey, He can make a way when there looks like there's no way. You know why? I mean, God's unchangeable. So He can make a way for them. He can make a way no matter what the need for every generation that will that'll call upon Him this morning. Bible tells us in the book of Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15 and call upon me in the day of the trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms 91 and verse 15 the Bible said and he shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him in honor. Hey right there's the key for God to make it away. We got to call on him. Hey we're not calling on him like we used to. The only time it seems like in this nation even our government even mentions anything about calling on God is when we have a big disaster. Something happens, terrorist act, a lot of people get killed, then they want to call on God so He'll make a way. You know, God will make a way in times of troubles and trials just simply because He's God this morning. Just simply because He can. And you know, my troubles and trials and your troubles and trials are something... Hey, they don't ever catch God, God off guard. He knows they was coming before they ever happened. I believe a lot of times He wants to see how we're going to react when these troubles and trials come. Now, God is a God that can make a way this morning. I, I run across something yesterday when I was studying and looking at this a little bit, how that God can make a way. I run across an old song yesterday. And I'm going to read the words to this old song to you real quickly before we get into this. This old song said, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He'll make a way for me. He'll, he'll be my guide. He'll hold me close to His side. With love and strength for each day new, He'll make a way. He'll make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, He'll lead me. And in rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade. But His words still remain. He will do something new today. Now, he's a God that can make a way. You know why, why he's that way? Because he's a way making God this morning. That's all God's ever done for mankind is make a way. And you know, I, I'll be honest with you this morning. I, I need him more right now than I've ever needed him in my life. 
Hey man, I, I've come to a red sea in my life. What direction am I going to go? Have you ever got to that place? Hey, there may be some in here this morning like the children of Israel got to that red sea and don't know which direction to go. Don't know which way to go. Don't know whether to go right to the left. Hey, you may be at that red sea this morning. Let me tell you something. There's a God that can make a way this morning. Hey, God can, can make a way when there looks like there's no way. Now you study your Bible this morning, you'll find a lot of people in this Bible that God made a way for when there looked like there was no way at all. They just scratching their head. What are we going to do? You'll find places in the Old Testament and the New Testament both that He made a way in death. Hey, He made a way in sickness, made a way in bad. There's times He made ways for folks in this Bible in financial trouble. There's times He made a way for people with family problems. He made ways for men in this Bible that had spiritual problems. And you know why He done that? Because He's simply God. Because He simply came. You know why God saved you this morning? Just simply because He could do it. Hey, there was no other way you could go to heaven but God making a way for you. Hey, there's a God this morning in this Bible that can make a way. Now, there's a lot of folks who look around a lot of times. Man, I've been there in the last few months. Don't know what direction to go. But I've really come to realize there's a God in heaven that can make a way. Hey, there's a God in heaven that can make a way when you're sick. There's a God in heaven that can make a way when you've got them family problems. We just need to look to God this morning because He's the way maker. And that's what I want to mm. preach on for a little while this morning is a God that can make a way. And man, there's a lot of people in this Bible. You see here in Isaiah 43, man, how he made a way for the children of Israel down at the Red Sea. How he made a way for them out in the wilderness. I'm going to look at them a little bit in a few minutes. But you know, you can go on over early on back over in the book of Genesis and find out in the book of Genesis there how God made a way after fellowship was broken. Hey, I mentioned Adam and Eve here probably the last couple of Sundays that I've preached. But man, you get to looking at Adam and Eve, there's a lot we can learn from Adam and Eve early on in the book of Genesis. You know, God, you know, man was God's greatest creation. Hey, he reached down and created man out of the dust of the earth. Hey, you ever get to thinking a little bit too highly of yourself? Just look down at the ground, see where you come from. Yeah. Hey, man, we come from the dirt. We come from the dust. Man, we come right out of this stuff that we're walking on all the time. And the Bible tells us that Adam was alone. It wasn't good. God didn't want him to be alone over there in the Garden of Eden. Wanted him to have somebody to fellowship with. And you remember God put Adam to sleep, took a rib out of him, and made woman from and made woman, woman out of Adam. And I mean, man, you think about Adam and Eve when they was in that garden where God put man there and put him to rule over everything in the earth there early in the Garden of Eden. Hey, man's above everything else. He's above the beasts of the field, above the animals. He put Adam and Eve in that garden to tend it, to take care of it. Had it made there in the garden of Eden. Hey, man, there was nothing evil in there. Nothing could harm them. But you, if you'll study your Bible, you'll find there in the garden of Eden is where mankind's fall began right there in the garden when man to begin to fall. Hey, you remember the devil came over there that day in the garden, came as a serpent. And man, he came and beguiled Eve according to this Bible. Lied to her, told her a lie. I mean, that was where the first lie came from in the book of Genesis, where they began to change the book. Early on, folks think they've just been changing this Bible the last few years. Hey, the devil started changing the book in the book of Genesis there. Telling her that what God said wouldn't happen and all this stuff. Told her to eat of the tree. She wouldn't die and all this. She fell for it, believed it, then told Adam about it. Adam loved her so much. Hey, that he followed Eve there, took of the tree, and they both failed and both sinned. You know what happened at that time? Fellowship was broke between them and God. Hey, sin will break fellowship between you and God. But you know, God's made a way to renew that fellowship when we sin. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. That's where mankind began to fall. Can't you imagine Adam and Eve in that garden over there? They've got heartbroken. They're probably sorrowing at this time. They're scared. They're fearing. Can't you imagine Adam and Eve probably got it in their mind, God's going to kill us. Don't want nothing to do with us anymore. 
We sinned. We went against Him. He's blessed us, put us in this perfect place. Can you imagine Adam and Eve begins to think in their mind, there's no way. Hey, Adam and Eve's looking around. There's no way out of this. What are we going to do? God's going to kill us. God don't want nothing to do with us anymore. You'll find there in the book of Genesis how they were hiding. They were hiding from God in the garden because they were naked. Hey, before they sinned, they didn't even know they was naked. I mean, man, they were living before God, fellowshipping with Him. Then they sin, they realize they're naked. And God comes looking for them and says, Adam. Hey, God wasn't wondering where Adam was at. He knows where he was at. He wanted Adam to know where he was at. He said, Adam, and look what's going on there in, there in the book of Genesis. You don't have to turn there. But the Bible talks about how God made coats of skin to clothe her. Hey, God made a way to restore that fellowship. Hey, God slipped off somewhere over there in the garden, probably, man, and slipped those little old lamb's throats. Man, took that, that for, a, for an offering over there. Man, and took those coats and put them on this first man and woman and restored fellowship with them. Hey, God made a way for fellowship early on in the book of Genesis. Man, they thought they were dead, thought there was no way. That's just like me and you, man, before we was got saved when we was lost. Hey, God made a way to restore fellowship with Him. Even after you get saved by God's grace, He made a way to restore fellowship through repentance. Hey, man, we got a God this morning that will make a way. We got a God when things look bad and things look dark during that midnight hour, He'll make a way. Hey, He made a way early on in the book of Genesis and showed mankind how much He really loved them. And you know, God would have been just to kill them. Hey, God would have been just just to kill them and throw them off to the side. But ain't you glad, man, He made a way that fellowship could be restored. And you, you go on a little farther over in the Bible there. We was looking here in Isaiah 43. How that God made a way for the children of Israel. You remember the children of Israel had been down in Egypt for over 400 years in bondage. Been working down there in those slime pits for over 400 years making bricks. And I'm talking about God's people that were in bondage. Being made slaves out of. You know, every time God would bless them, though, they'd turn their back on them. We're the same way. Every time God blesses, we go the other direction. God can do something good for us, change our direction, and the next thing you know, we're going the opposite way again. But they'd been in bondage for over 400 years down in Egypt. You remember God let a little old baby be born down there by the name of Moses. And you remember how man that he was born and his mother was afraid she wasn't going to be hiding, be able to hide him much longer. Put him in that little old ark down there and put him out in the river. You remember Pharaoh's daughter found him. Remember what Pharaoh's daughter also done? His mother was standing watching. He called her in. Didn't know that was his real mother. But called, him, called her in to be his nurse to take care of him. Hey, the devil got to raise. The devil's crowd got to raise this man. Got to feed him. Got to educate him. Hey, God knew what he was doing the whole time. Look at this little old boy that was born. Out there in the wilderness one time after he got grown, remember that burning bush took place. Remember God looked at Moses out there at that burning bush and told him he had a people that he needed to be delivered. Told him that his family and his people had been down in Egypt long enough. And he wanted him to go to deliver. Hey, you remember Moses goes back down to Egypt? A lot of different things begin to take place. Remember, he goes before Pharaoh and tells him down there, let my people go. Pharaoh kept hardening his heart, and the next thing you know, God began to bring these plagues. Hey, Amen. There was things happened in Egypt that never seen and never seen like since then when God brought those plagues. <coughs> hey, when God does something, it'll get you attention. Right. Hey, he brought those plagues up on Egypt, kept going through each and every one of them. But Pharaoh kept hardening his heart. And God called Moses off one day and said, Moses, I'm going to make a way. He told him when that last plague come right there through the death of those firstborn. He said, I want you to put the blood up on the doorpost and up on the limb. And he said, when I pass over and see the blood, I'll pass over you. 
Hey, God made a way through the blood to get them out of Egypt. Hey, you better be glad this morning God made a way for His people. Man, those people had been sitting down there for over 400 years, didn't think there was no way out, didn't think there was going to be no other direction, thought their children was going to have to stay in there and be slaves. But God made a way out of Egypt through the blood. And you know, God brought them out of Egypt, told Moses He was going to lead them on to the promised land. Hey, Moses brought them out of Egypt. They left Egypt and they got down to the Red Sea. Do you remember when they, when they was on their way to the Red Sea, something began to happen. Pharaoh had hardened his heart. Pharaoh decided he was going to go after Moses and the children of Israel. Hey, they get down to the Red Sea and they camp out down there next to the Red Sea. And man, they got a couple of problems going on here. Something to deal with. They've got the Egyptians coming after them. And hey, they got to deal with the Red Sea also. Hey, they begin to murmur at Moses. We'd have been better off to stay in Egypt. We'd have the garlics and the onions and all those things to eat. They was looking at him and said, we'd been better off to stay down there. How are we going to cross this? Hey, there's water everywhere. Well, how are we going to get through this? And you remember Moses looks at him and says, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord and fear not. Moses said he's going to make a way. You look there in Isaiah 43 and verse 16. The Bible said, Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and the path in the mighty waters. Hey, he led them down to the Red Sea. And they're standing there looking. What's going to happen? But verse 16 there said, God was going to make a way in the sea. God looks down at Moses and tells him to take that rod and stretch it out over the Red Sea. You'll look it over there in the book of Exodus how the Bible talked about the wind began to blow that night. Blowed all night long. Blowed that water back. Could you imagine that man down at the Red Sea? Because the Bible tells us that he put a wall between them and the Egyptians that night. The Egyptians couldn't get to them and they couldn't get, they couldn't get to each other. That cloud, that wall that was out there protecting them gave them light. Bible talks about that wind blowing that water back in dry ground. Man, can you imagine them Israelites when that water begins to go back and they realize God's going to make a way. They realize there was a way out of this. They'd been looking at that water didn't know what was going to happen. And God pulls the water back. Wall of water on each side. The Bible said they went through on dry ground. Man, I don't believe there was any mud even down there. I believe that whole ground was dry. I believe God made a highway through there as smooth as silk that they could walk on. Hey man, they was old people. They was men to Jews there. They was elderly people that wasn't going to be able to walk too fast. They was young people that was probably running. Man, they was men that was probably trying to get their family through there. Can you imagine them going through on dry ground and looking back and forth at each side of that water? And all they could see was God was making a way. Hey, God made a way out of Egypt, man, through the blood. And God's made a way through the water. Hey, so they still had a problem. Oh, them Egyptians was after them. Them Egyptians was going to chase them. They wanted to kill them. You imagine God looking at them and said, Come on in, boys. Come on in here. You come in a little bit. The Bible said their wheels got to begin to fall off the chariots. God let them fall off. You imagine God. I mean, He had a plan. Hey, that water that saved the Israelites was going to be the same water that destroyed the Egyptians. Same thing he used to get them through. But God said, come on in, Pharaoh. Told them to bring that army in. They began to go in. And God let that water come back off. You imagine them Israelites standing on the other side on dry ground praising God for making a way. Hey, they got out of Egypt through the blood He made a way. And then He made a way through the Red Sea. And you look in verse 19 right there in Isaiah 43. The Bible said, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, you shall not know. I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hey, it was Moses' job to lead them to Canaan land. Hey, they got out in the wilderness, man, and them Israelites went to bucking Moses again. Hey, God let them wander around out there for 40 years. And it was just a few days' journey to where they was going. But the Bible said that He made a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
Hey, they got out there at times and didn't have no water to drink. But God made a way in the desert. Hey, they wandered around out there for 40 years. The Bible said that their clothes grow on their back and shoes on their feet. Hey, God brought manna down from heaven and brought flesh down for them to eat. You know what God would do? God made a way when it didn't seem like there was no way. Even when that crowd was bucking Moses all the time. Hey, Moses had his hands full. But God made a way. Hey, if God can make a way out of Egypt through the blood, He can make a way through the Red Sea. And He can make a way out in the desert in the wilderness. Surely to God, He can make a way for me and you this morning. Hey, He's a God that can make a way. We walk around a lot of times scratching our heads. What are we going to do? Hey, God can make a way this morning. Hey, He's a way-making God. You remember God made a way back over there in the book of 1 Samuel one time. God made a way. There was a giant in the land back in that day. God made a way against the Philistines and a giant by the name of Goliath. You go over in 1 Samuel chapter number 17 and you'll see where Israel was going into battle against the Philistines. You know the Philistines had that giant that was about 6 foot 9 inches tall by the name of Goliath. And you'll find that Israel was on one mountain, the Philistines was on another mountain, and there was a valley in between them. You remember that giant by the name of Goliath was coming down and making fun of Israel life and then mocking at him. Hey, he knew that there wasn't nobody could do anything to him. You remember Saul was the leader of Israel at that time. And Saul and Israel was scared to death. They was trembling. They was in a place that they just didn't know what they was going to do. They didn't see no way out. They didn't see no way to get through this giant. But you remember God made a way. Remember there's a little old shepherd boy by the name of David came down to check on his brothers one day during battle. And man, I'm talking about a little old shepherd boy the way the Bible talks about it. Hey, but let me say this little old shepherd boy was one of the greatest kings. He was the king of Israel. He was the one that Israel loved. He's the one they mourned over. Hey, David was a great, one of the greatest kings. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 29, and David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Hey, David looked at his brothers when he went down there to check on them in battle. He said, Is there not a cause? Hey, God knew there was a cause and he was going to make a way. Hey, David looked at all these others that were afraid and scared to go out and fight Goliath. Hey, David looks at his brothers down there and said, I've killed a bear and a lion with my bare hands. I believe David looked at him and said, that giant ain't going to be much trouble. He said, I killed that bear and lion of slum. Took care of him. He said, this giant ain't going to be much trouble at all. They put Saul's armor on David. David looks back at him and said, I'm not trying this. I'm not wearing it. It ain't going to work. David said, I need just two or three little old things. I just need my staff, five smooth stones, and a sling. You imagine the Israelites looking at David. They know that Goliath was probably going to kill him. Little old shepherd boy never been in my limitation. This little old shepherd boy had some goods. And he had God with him. Right. You know, if we've ever needed to see the day and time, David was a man. David had some mighty men that went to battle under him when he became king. Hey, David was a man that was a man. Hey, if we've ever lived in a day and time, we need some men that's right now. Right. We're living in a day and time, man, that men's got, got pushed off to the side. We act like in this country they're not supposed to be men anymore. Men ought to be men and stand up and act like men. Mm -hmm. Men ought to take charge of stuff again and run things again like they used to. That's the way God set this book up for man to be <laughs> over the house, be over the house of God, be over his home. But we've got away from that anymore. Hey, David was a man and stood, stood, went straight toward Goliath. Remember Goliath laughed at him and mocked at him when he come down there? But David looked at took that little old swing and that stone with him down there. And David looked at him and said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. That's all David needed. David ran toward him and pulled one little old stone out of that bag and took that sling and slung it at him. 
Bible said that that, that thing sunk in his forehead and he fell to the ground in his face. You'd think he'd fell, fell the other way without hitting him. God pushed that man down, I believe, when that stone hit him. And the Bible said that David didn't even have a sword on him or anything. He took Goliath's sword away from him and cut his head off in victory. Hey, they was in a place in battle that they looked like there was no way. And God made a way. He's the giant killer. Hey, we got a lot of giants in our life a lot of times. It looks like there's no way. We got a lot of giants that nobody knows anything about that we need to bring down and cut their head off. Hey, we got a lot of giants in our life. A lot of times it makes it look like there's no way. But let me tell you, God can make a way this morning. God can kill a giant with one little old rock. Could you imagine what kind of ways He can make for me and you if we just count on Him and listen to Him? I'm talking about a God this morning that can make a way. Hey, you go over to the book of 2 Kings. You don't have to turn there. Chapter number 4, verse 1 through 7. You'll find how God made a way for a widow when the creditors threatened to take her son. Hey, you go over to 1 2 Kings chapter number 4. There was a widow woman there whose husband had died. And this widow woman had two sons. Her husband died and he owed a debt to somebody. The Bible don't say what he owed, how much he owed, but he did owe a creditor. And that creditor came down to that widow woman and told her pretty much if she couldn't pay this debt off, she was, he was going to take her two sons and he was going to make slaves out of them, make bond men out of them to pay this debt off. Now, can you imagine this woman's lost her husband? And it looks like now she may lose her two sons over a debt. Hey, she was in a situation that looked like there was no way out of it. But she got to looking around there and there was an old prophet there by the name of Elisha. Hey man, Elisha was one of them Old Testament prophets that had some wisdom about him. Hey, he'd done more miracles than Elijah ever did. And Elijah put his mantle on him and he got the double portion. Hey, you follow these men around and read after these men like Elisha. They know that God will make a way. They've seen God do too many things. Here's this little old widow woman looks at Elisha and says, what am I going to do? There's no way out of this. He's going to take my boys. Elisha looks at that little old widow woman and said, well, what do you got in your house? That little old widow woman didn't have much, just her two boys and a roof over her head. She said, I got one little old cruise of oil in the house. Nothing there but this little old pot of oil. He said, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. He told that widow woman, said, you and your boys go from house to house. Go to your neighbors and knock on their door and borrow, borrow every vessel you can borrow, borrow every pot you can find. And he said, when you get as many as you can, he said, get all of them you can get, as many as you can get. Bring them in your house and close the door when you get them back in there, you and your boys. Elisha said, you take that oil that you've got. And you begin to pour it in them pots. You know what was a miracle about that? That oil never run out. I don't know how many vessels they borrowed, how many they had. They had to have several. Yeah. And Elisha told her, said, you pour that oil in each of these pots. And you know, when they got them all filled, they were still oil. They were still more oil to pour. pour. But that little old widow woman slips off to Elisha and said, they're all full of what I do. Elisha looked at her and said, you take that oil and sell it and go pay that debt off. Said, you pay it off and you rest. You and them boys, you to be a family. Hey, here was a little woman, a little old widow woman that looked like there's no way. But Elisha said, there's a God in heaven. And that oil ain't going to run out. Hey, you know we got a God in heaven that holy, that holy oil will never run out. Hey, man, we got a God in heaven that can make a way when they don't look like there's no way. Hey, that was a little widow woman, man, that was scared to death. Didn't know what she was going to do. But Elisha said, take that oil and sell it. Hey, we need that heavenly oil to get around the house of God. Hey, God's got some heavenly oil that will never run out. Hey, he's, got, he's a God that's got a storehouse this morning that's full. Hey, he's got a storehouse, man. He's got shelves full of grapes and mercy. 
that we just need to get a hold of this morning. He's a God that can make a way. You remember over in Daniel chapter number 3? There was a God that made a way through the fire. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible said, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down in the midst of the fire, burning in a fiery furnace. Remember, there was a king back there in that day by the name of Nebuchadnezzar that set up a golden image, set up an idol. And he set this up and made it, made it to cry over their decree that said when certain music plays, you're going to fall down and worship this image. He said everybody in the kingdom is going to worship this big hunk of gold. You remember there was some men come to the king and told him that there was three men that wouldn't follow orders. They wasn't going to fall down and worship. Hey, he calls these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to go in before him. And said, I've heard that you're not going to fall down and worship this. Hey, here's three more men that's got some guts and got a backbone. He hey, said, no way, king, we're going to worship this false idol. This, uh, this false idol. Hey, they know there was a God in heaven that was real and a God that was going to get them through the fire. Hey, here's three men that may have looked like there was no way out. And the old king had already made it in the law and said if anybody don't fall down and worship, they're going to be cast into a burning fiery furnace. Old king looks at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and says we're going to heat that furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been heated and we're going to cast you in. They looked at him and said, well, go ahead. God's able to deliver us if it's His will. Hey, these three men know that God can deliver Bible said they bound these three men with their coats on, their hats, and everything they had and threw them into the furnace. Bible said it slew the men that threw them in because of faith was so hot. Can you imagine that? It slew those men that was throwing them into the fiery furnace. I don't know how long they was in this furnace the old king looks in. Can't you imagine the king when he looks in there? I believe he had to sit down. He said, hold it just a minute. we got a problem. He said, didn't we throw three in that furnace? Can't you imagine that old king wiping his eyes out and looking back in there again, probably getting some of his servants to look in there and said, we throw three in there and there's four walking around in the fire. Can't you imagine that old king looking at them and said, they're in there walking and there's no harm to them. Their clothes is not even burning. Hey man, that's something got a hold of that king. Let me tell you something, when God gets in the fire, He'll walk with you. Hey, He was already in the fire. There ain't no fire that can destroy Him. Hey, there ain't no fire that can bring God down. You imagine that old king looking in there and them four walking around. Man, I wonder if they may have been walking around in there hand in hand waving at Him. Hey, they was rejoicing even though they was in the fire. Hey, I know these old boys know God can deliver, but they was human. Can't you imagine when he got thrown in there, they may have been wondering they no way out. But they look around and that fourth man steps in. Let me say, when that fourth man steps in the fire, he'll make a way. Hey man, there's probably people in this building this morning that can stand up and testify. God's made a way when it looked like there's no way. Hey man, there these four, that the, the old king told them, said, bring them out of that fire. Man, that king brings them out of there. And he looks at them. There's no hurt on them. Their hair's not singing. They ain't even no smell of smoke on them boys. Hey, that's hard for this old mind to imagine. But let me tell you, when God gets in the fire, there'll be no harm. And when God gets in the fire, He'll make a way. Hey, let me give you about one more. I hear two more things and I'll be done. You remember over in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 1 through 7, there was a man there by the name of Elijah. Hey, God made a way down by the brook for Elijah. And He made a way at the widow's house for Elijah also. Hey, you, you remember Elijah stood up against Ahab and Jezebel had they been so wicked. And you remember he looked at Ahab and told him it wasn't going to rain until he said so. Hey, here's a dud that had a backbone. Here's a dud that was a real man, a warrior. Here was one that seen some things that God had done and it made a difference in his life. 
Hey, old Elijah stood up against Ahab, and God knew they was going to try to kill him. God told Ahab, you need to go down by the brook Cherith and hide out. And he went down to the brook, but you know, when he went down to the brook, oh, oh uh, Elijah was going to have some needs just like anybody else. He was going to have to eat. He was going to have to have some water to drink. But you know, God already had a, had a way made. He told Elijah to go down to that brook. He said, I'm giving you a whole brook to drink out of during this drought. Hey, you drink all you want to. It's all yours. And he said, twice today, I'm going to have these ravens, these common fowls of the air to fly over your head. He said, twice today, I'm going to have them bring you bread and flesh two times today to eat. Hey, here's a servant of God. Maybe when God starts seeking him out, he may have been wondering, is God going to make a way? Hey, God made a way for his man down by the brook during the drought. Then I don't know how long Elijah had been down there, but the Bible said that brook dried up. So apparently Elijah may have been down there. He may have been down there a pretty good while for that brook to dry up. And when that brook dried up, I wonder if Elijah got scratching his head. What's God going to do now? Here's a man that they're looking for, the king's looking for, and going to try to kill him. And, Elijah, and God looks at Elijah and said, Elijah, I'm going to make a way. I want you to go down the Zerah path. He said, there's a little old well widow woman down there that's going to take care of you. And if you'll, you'll study about these widows, man, they weren't known to, be, not known to be people that would take care of somebody. They had very little. They had just enough for themselves so maybe their children to take care of. But Elijah goes down to that little old widow woman. Now, little, he tells her, he said, I want you to make me a little cake, something to eat. She looks at Elijah and says, I ain't got but a little handful of meal and just a little oil, just a morsel. Elijah says, you make me a cake first, and I'm going to promise you something. He said, I want you to look there at that table where that cruise of oil at and where that barrel of meal is at. He said, if you'll feed me first, God's done said that's not going to run out. Till the rain comes again. That woman goes and makes Elijah a cake and gives him a cake of, corn, cake of bread and he eats it. And the Bible said that cruise of oil and that meal barrel never run out. Do you imagine that little old widow woman looking at Elijah and scratching her head? Do you know why that happened? She done exactly what the man of God told her to do. And you know if we ever do exactly what this book says and what God says, God will start making some ways. That's where we mess up. We don't do things the way the book says. And we wonder why God's not making a way. Hey, He made a way for Elijah, a man down at the brook. He made a way for Elijah. And this widow woman at her house. You know, that widow woman's son even gets sick and dies. <coughs> hey, God made a way for her death right there. Let Elijah raise him back. Hey, He's a way making God. And you know the last thing that we really take light very lightly most of the time anymore in our Christian lives. It's something we hear very we, we don't hear preached on very much anymore. And it's something we don't hear taught about. We don't even hear it sung about much anymore. You know, God made a way for mankind at Calvary. <clears throat> and he made a way when it looked like there was no way. The Bible said in Luke 23, 33, when they were come to a place which is called Calvary, there they crucified Him. John 14, 6, the Bible said, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, God's way to heaven this morning is simply run to Calvary. You know, He's not a way, but He's the way. Hey, it's a narrow way this morning. It's the only way this morning. Hey, God made a way through Calvary. These Old Testament saints you study your Bible, man, their sins was rolled back from one year to the next. Hey, the priest had to go in behind the veil one time a year to take the blood and make the sacrifice. Hey, you remember what was going on that day about the same time that Jesus was being crucified at Calvary? That priest had went in behind the veil to make the blood offering. Bible said the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. 
You know what happened when Jesus was crucified at Calvary? He made a way. Hey, there was a sign went up that day and says there's a new and living way. Everybody come on in. Hey, they didn't have to roll their sins back from one year to the next after that. You know why God made a way at Calvary? Hey, it's still Calvary this morning. It's still the old rugged cross this morning. It's still through the blood. Man, what a place Calvary was. Hey, it's a place you don't hear much about anymore. We want to preach and teach on everything coming and going and sing about everything coming and going but Calvary. Right. Hey, man, Calvary was a place that Jesus made a way for a lost and dying world when there looked like there was no way. Hey, we're living in a society right now that looks like there's no way. Hey, there's a way this morning called Jesus Christ. Right. There's a way this morning called Calvary. And you think about it this morning. Jesus made a way for me and you to get out of here. Hey, if I go out through the way of the grave this morning, He made a way through Calvary for me to go to heaven. And if He comes back in the rapture, it'll be that much better. He's made a way that we can fly this morning. Hey, you say you think you're going to fly? The Bible said He said come up here. Man, I believe the dead in Christ are going to rise first and those that are alive and remain are going to meet Him in the air. Hey, He made a way. Hey, we've looked for every way coming and going. We're looking for a way right now in the government. We're looking for a way out of every mess we've got into in this country. You know why we're in the mess we're in? We've got away from this way. That's why we're, we're, we're making laws that this plum foolish anymore. That's why we're making laws it's all right to kill a baby. That's why we're making laws man, that abortion's legal. That's why we're making laws that same-sex marriage and all this stuff's all right. We've got away from the ways of the book. Man, God made a way. It's a narrow way. The Bible said there'll be few that find it. Hey, it's, a, it's not a broad way this morning. Hey, if we live a Christian life, we've got to the place that most folks even think, even in our churches, man, you can live any way you want to all week long. But just show up on Sunday morning and Sunday night, Wednesday night, everything will be all right. It's a narrow way. Man, we, we've made this thing out to be a broad way. We've made it in to be many ways to get in. But ain't you glad He made a way through Calvary? Hey, man, you may be at your Red Sea this morning. Maybe at the place you don't know what you're going to do, which direction you're going to go. He can make a way. Hey, there's other people in this Bible, thousands of them we can pull out of there this morning for an example. Hey, you know the best examples we can have, the best preaching we can have is Bible examples. A lot of the preaching you do you hear anymore don't even have nothing to do with the Word. We'll, we'll preach, pull two or three verses out, then go to preach and never get back to it. Never get into the book. Man, Bible examples is what we need. You know, the children of Israel was our examples according to this Bible. Hey, we got grafted into something special when we got into the family of God. He's a way-making God this morning. Hey, let's stand to our feet this morning. We're not even going to have any music. I just want everybody to bow your heads for just a minute. Hey, I don't know anybody's heart. don't know anybody's troubles and trials. Hey, we've all got them. Everybody does. Every family's got them. But I'm afraid we're forgetting that there's a God that can make a way this morning. Hey, there may be somebody in here just wants to step out this morning, just come to the altar. Hey, you might just want to lay something down at His feet this morning and say, Lord, I, I've got to that Red Sea. I don't know what direction to go. Hey, you might want to come and just intervene for somebody else. They may be at that Red Sea. They may be looking there and not know exactly what to do. Hey, your prayers might help them this morning. Maybe somebody in this community, you might just want to step out and pray for them. They may be going a different direction than they need to. Anybody in this building this morning need to step out. Hey, you might just want to simply, simply slip your hand up this morning, this morning. Nobody looking but me and God. Say, preacher, I'd like for you to pray for me. I, I got some things, some people that needs help. Be one anywhere in the middle of this, simply sit your hand up. Say, I'd like for you to God sees our hands. Hey, we need people to pray for us this morning more than we ever have. He's a good God. He's a way-making God. Hey, there's going to be a day he comes back. His troubles and trials are over. He's made a way out of here. We need to be a thank you. Anybody need to move? Come on if you need to.
We're going to pray and go home. Anybody? Father, I want to thank you this morning for being the God you are. I want to thank you this morning for loving us the way you do. Dear Lord, you're a God that can make a way in any situation. Hey, it may look dark right now in this country, but dear God, we're living in the midnight hour right now. You are coming. Dear God, things are lining up in the Middle East. They're lining up all around this world. Dear God, you told us there'd be wars and rumors of wars. You told us there'd be earthquakes in diverse places. There'd be things happening we never expected. And dear God, I pray we could be looking up this morning. I, I believe you're coming. I believe you're coming to get your church. I believe you're getting lonely. You want to see your bride. And I pray, dear God, we can be clean and holy when you show up to get us. I pray for each one in this building. They whose hands went up all through this building this morning. You know their objects. You know their needs. I pray you'd move upon them. I pray you'd make a way, dear God, in these, in these uh, things that's been mentioned, in these prayers that were spoken, hands went up. Make a way in them, dear God. Make a way for each individual in this building this morning. I know there's some in here probably got lost loved ones. Dear God, you made a way that they could be saved. And I pray right now you'd make a way to bring them under Holy Ghost conviction. Dear God, I thank you for loving us. Thank you for making a way at Calvary once again this morning. Dear God, you've been better to us than we ever deserved. Dear God, we can stand here all day long and never thank you enough for being good to us. Thank you for loving us, dear God. Thank you for these that's met out here this morning. Give them a good week. Give them a good day today. Bless them. And dear God, I pray you'd give each one in this building good health and strength this week. And we'll thank you for what you've done for us. Because in Jesus' sweet and precious holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Hope you've been a little help to you this morning. Appreciate everybody coming out.